This is the weekly sales meeting for March 19th, 2023. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic, your value is not set by others. The value judgment of what you sell and what you represent is often determined by the first contract. The final agreed upon price determines the forward motion value of you. In a perfect world, that value can be set by the seller based on the perceived value of the goods and services. But perception is often wrong. It is clouded by alternative facts and speculations. Sometimes it is formulated by rumors, innuendo, and conjecture. Don't believe me? Follow any social media homeowners group. There is at least one request daily for some home service with the inevitable additional request of for a reasonable price, quote unquote. The request is not for a job well done. The request is not for proficient and timely completion. Only for that price the homeowner deems reasonable. The truth is that the homeowner has no idea what the job should cost and what it takes to be done correctly, only what they are willing to part with to solve the problem. And here lies the rub. It is not steeped in value, but only reduced to cost. As the generations change, the connection to actual work becomes detached. Many have never swung a hammer, hung drywall, installed a floor, changed out a window, or put shingles on a roof. The idea of what it takes to be successful is determined by some self-proclaimed internet guru, one who lives in East Oshkosh, Wisconsin, while your home is sitting on Oak Avenue in Tucson, Arizona. Meanwhile, forget the tradesmen or tradeswoman who spent years perfecting their craft, the one investing in the proper equipment, the one studying the latest tech in their field. They have no relevance against the information superhighway. It is on the internet, so it must be true. So I should pay only $5,000 for a new roof, even though the going rate is $20,000. What have we become? We have lost the connection to the value of actual work. We as a society are challenged because we know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. But we don't do this in all areas. When it comes to things like the legal profession, medicine, dental, we don't. You know, the things that could kill us or land us in jail. We take the expert's word for it. We know in these instances you get what you pay for, so buyer beware. Everything else is subject to our own interpretation of value. And for some reason, we do this with jobs we perceive to be easy. We do this with tasks we deem menial. We do this with what appears to be the mundane or routine. When tasks are particularly specialized, we do not. Those believed and perceived to have a high value, therefore high cost. It may be because we don't think we should be able to do them ourselves. But these other activities in our minds, we believe these tasks do not take skill. Because of that, they should not take any time at all. Their value is diminished and open to interpretation. And that interpretation is always lower than the actual retail price. It is a lot like politicians. We all know the world of politics is sketchy at best, but when it comes to voting, individuals all fall in the same trap. It is the other guy who's the problem. My candidate is okay. Everyone else is trying to cheat the system. Why? Because your choice aligns with your own narrative. And then our cognitive biases take over. We mask over all of their flaws because they align with our personal narrative. That has value. And then we defend that position no matter if it is right or wrong. Because we declared that is the one we like. And since we declared it to be so, it is the most right. Everyone else is wrong. Our candidate has a ton of value to us because they align with our thoughts about the world. And that value is worth a lot to us. There is a difference between price and value. The Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, claims price is what you pay and value is what you get. When the customer doesn't see value in the activity, a low price is assigned. The human brain brushes it aside and claims its value to be whatever number we assign to it. So it is up to the salesperson to create the roadmap for value. Remember the trade-offs people are willing to exchange for money? They are time effort, or prestige? How can you create impactful reminders of these elements when selling your product or when selling your service? How can you connect the dots for the customer? When you are able to draw the pathway to value, the price becomes secondary to the usefulness or significance of the exchange. Humans will work to simplify everything to reduce decisions to easy, so it is up to the salesperson to change the impact statement. 
Capitalism is based on two strong principles. One is prices are equal to value. High prices are equal to high value. And the second is the prices assigned to goods and services are, generally, fair. It assumes people are honest, and most are honest. There are a few who are not. But we live in our own bubble world, one where prices assigned to goods and services are fair for everyone else. But we, we are special. We should get our own, far below market value, price for everything we buy. As Thomas Edison said, the value of an idea lies in the using of it. If we are not teaching people how to use our product and what it can do for them in the long term, we will be reduced to the lowest common denominator. For us, that is always the price, and the price becomes subjective. It is subject to the value assigned by the buyer, not for the problem you solve, but the perceived effort assigned to it. Lower perceived value activities will be given a lower price, and high perceived value activities will get this higher pricing tier. American author and public speaker John Nesbitt was an expert in future studies. His book, called Megatrends, 10 New Directions for Transforming Our Lives, was first published in 1982. The book has sold more than 14 million copies. He had thoughts about value and price. He claimed value is what people are willing to pay for it, and the value will be determined by its utility. When we go back to the same well year after year without enhancements and upgrades, the perceived value continues to diminish. We can't keep selling the same thing to the same people year over year and expect the value to increase like magic. This will take an upgrade to the offer or a different barrel of prospects. A new group of prospects with a new set of challenges may place a higher value on the deliverable of the solution. We may not know that as we have never asked. Often we assume that everyone behaves the same. With existing customers, we have to enhance the offering. It means either we find a new problem to solve or need to fill, or we enhance our product offering to open ourselves up to a new audience group. This is our challenge, to make our product or service part of the need for our customers, thus increasing its value. Without need, the value is diminished and often predetermined. Here is where retailers have an advantage. They know when a customer shows up at their place of business, there is a declared need. That customer is shopping for something. In outside sales, the declaration is less obvious. The declaration must be defined by the seller, and it gets defined by the seller by creating a value proposition for it by making it solve a problem or fill a need, thus giving it a valuable function that is exchanged for money. Many in outside sales fail to recognize their own value. Their motivation is only to make the sale today. They fail to think about the long-range value proposition. They don't think about the perception created with their customers. They will not push the envelope on their own value. They accept the status quo in order to sell something today. The risk of empty hands is too great. These are sellers that would rather have the sure thing of today than the risk of nothing, and they will never work on increasing the value of their product. It sounds too much like work. But if we don't push the value upward, it has only one other direction to go. British author Jeanette Winterson gave us, Oranges are not the only fruit. She claims what you risk reveals what you value. If we do not risk increasing our own value, what value do we place on ourselves? We should always be looking to increase our value proposition to our customers. Otherwise, better, higher priced options could replace us at the value table of life. Fish have a very clear pecking order. There are top feeders and there are bottom feeders. Which are you? The late football coach Mike Leach was someone I worked with while I was in Texas. He was always good for a colorful phrase or two. He once said fish aren't smart. It's not like they have advanced degrees. But they are smart enough to know which one they are. At times, we don't recognize when we have a high-value product. We allow the marketplace to dictate based on previous experience with like products. My goal was always to create a non-preemptible position for my product. This was to assign it the highest value and then charge for that value even when I had to craft the narrative to make it so. Others go with the flow and let the current dictate the future. When the marketplace is the only dictate, price is the only narrative. It is up to us to create our own value proposition, to be worth the price we are charging. The customer reverts to price comparisons because they do not understand the concept of our value. We must draft the roadmap to value. We must create an understanding of the deliverable. We have to draw the parallel to tangibility. If we don't, we will all be reduced to the price comparison. It is here where the internet, their cousin Sally, or some historical transaction from 1955 is the final arbiter of value. 
Then we are all selling in the social media wasteland of reasonable pricing, as assigned by your homeowners association group. And your new customer's name is Karen. I am quite sure you have met before. My book, Yes, I'm a Salesman, You Can Be Too, is now available on Amazon.com. If you like what you have heard here today, please consider ordering a copy or two. You can always send one to a friend. You can go to Amazon.com right now to order or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com and follow the instructions to order yours.